You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today on the show, we have a music artist, Davey Williamson. And you can go to DaveyWilliamson.com because today we're going to be talking about his latest single, Thin Disguise. This guy, he's been in the game for a while. He's he's doing great things, man. From singer songwriter, born in Plant City, Florida, raised in Wilmington, North Carolina, launched his career in 1996. I mean, this guy been going from one band to another to another, and we have a story behind that though, because he's been doing his thing. So, without further ado, Davey, how you doing, man? Good, good, good. Thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. So I kind of splashed through the teaser of you going from one band to another from 1996, 2004, yes, 2006 to where we are today. You doing solo. What was life like growing up, man? Because you were born in uh, Plant City, Florida, but you grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. So what was life like in North Carolina? Yeah, so I, I didn't spend a lot of time in Plant City, Florida. Just born there, I think I was moved to Wilmington, North Carolina around the age of one or two. And I guess I should know that, but I, but I don't. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, the, uh, I don't have any memories of it. And I, un- unfortunately I've never made it back to Plant City. So I couldn't even tell you what it looked like or, or have any uh, family that still resides in that area. So for me, um, it was mainly Wilmington, North Carolina is where I grew up. Um, it's a it's a college town, it's a party town, it's a coastal town, and a river town. So Wilmington's a uh, – it's – back when I was a little bit younger, it was a much smaller city, probably 20,000, 30,000 people. And at this point, it's, it's upwards of getting close to around 200,000 people in the metro area. So it's, it's, it's a much bigger city than what I remember growing up in. But um, I have a lot of memories here, a lot of fond memories, um, even elementary school all the way through high school. And at about the high school time um, is when the music for me really started um, getting some traction. And I started traveling around and touring and, and playing different places. And then I started moving around. And then before you know it, here I am today. I started off in my background um, on my mother's side was more, it was always like the, the golden oldies kind of thing and the Motown thing. So I have a, a, a rich history in listening to that and becoming a big fan. She was also a big fan of pop. Um, I was mainly raised by my mother. Um, my parents split when I was, I think I was around seven, eight years old. And um, she was kind of just took care of me and my brother uh, here in Wilmington and, and we were hellions. So. Uh, <laughs> looking back on it, um, once we had, uh, I guess a couple of years, I guess we were about, I think it was probably, I want to say I was 12, maybe when my mother got remarried, my brother was 10 or it could have been, I was 10 and he was eight. I can't remember off the top of my head, but, um, my stepfather came into the, to the mix and then things, it, started to get a little smoother financially started to start doing a little bit better. My mother was acting as a painter and would just leave us at home. And then of course we would, you know, skip school and do all the things that we should have been doing. But, um, we at some point got involved with guitars and ran music and just kept moving, moving along step by step with that. And then we figure out we couldn't play this instrument. We'd play another. And, um, before we knew it, we were full-fledged musicians, even going into middle school or starting in middle school. And um, that's kind of a little bit of the background on it. And and all that happened right here in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. So pretty interesting stuff. So in 1996, when you decided to launch your career, what was the first band called and what is the story behind that? <laughs> Man, you made this difficult on me, aren't you? <laughs> Bringing up the oldies. So we, there was a lot of bands that we had. And, and funny enough, I was talking about this 
with my wife uh, just before the holidays when we were traveling for the holidays to visit family. A friend of mine, Cutler Desjolais, and my brother, Stevie Williamson, we uh, we had started these little bands when we were younger, and one of them, believe it or not, was called Chocolate Cow. We had instruments that our family had bought us, but we didn't have... Uh, we didn't have the ability to play them. So we had, we had zero ability to play them. However, my friend Cutler's dad worked at uh, Textiles, which is a textiles company. So he made these little patches. And when we were in school, we decided, well, if we can't play music, we'll start a clothing line and we'll tell people that Chocolate Cow is the name of our clothing line. Then when they all were wearing Chocolate Cow, we named our band Chocolate Cow, but we could, we were terrible musicians back then. <laughs> was that in major chords or minor? And then it, it, it went from there to a band called Emilio Five, which I still to this day have no idea what any of that means. And then it continued to grow. I was in a band called uh, Third Class Passenger, which had some minor success uh, uh, regionally. And then... Um, from there, I was in a, a punk rock band called Ma Shot Pa, which also um, regionally had some success, um, touring and radio and that kind of thing. And then I just got kind of tired of playing in the bands and it never really getting anywhere. And when it started to get somewhere, the band would break up and then it felt like you were never really getting anything accomplished because all your efforts went null and void. And you had to kind of start back to scratch, which is what led me to where I'm at today. As a solo artist and performing all the, the instruments myself, and that one band, two thousand four, uh, Marsha Pa is like if you say that real slow, it's a dark humor joke. But what's the story behind that name? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, that's a good question. <laughs> it was it was a punk rock band, and the the angst fueled uh, lyrics based on relationships we just kind of visualized it as like moms who killed dads kind of thing or, but you know yeah. but we we cut we said it because it, it was a good name but it also sounded funny and it also was fitting because we're from north carolina right yeah. so it's kind of like hillbilly a little bit as well exactly what <laughs> I saw in my head. it kind of sounds like it sounds kind of hillbilly so we kind of laughed about it and we were like yeah whatever that'll work well with like a lot of bands that choose their band names, they they wish they could go back and change them. <laughs> Did somebody uh, have a point, banjo? <laughs> yeah. So at that point, I, I had already kind of, I was just like, you know what? I, I'm one of these that's so driven on trying to get things like moving forward that I just kind of, I'm like, yeah, 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 that doesn't matter yet. You know, even whether it be with, with opening a business and things like that, I'll just make up a business name and roll with it. And then I don't ever put any thought into it. And by the time your business is, has blossomed or your, your band has blossomed into doing stuff and touring, then you're making posters and you're like, why did we allow this to happen to ourselves? Like, this is such stupid sound. And, you know, if you look at even Dave Grohl with the Foo Fighters, he did it because he didn't think it was going to become anything. But now they're the Foo Fighters. So, you know, I guess I got to just roll with the, with the punches um, back then. But we had a little bit of success, so I learned something from it. Yeah, they call that experience. So that that's good that <laughs> y'all have grown since then. So in 2006, you decided to move on. And since then, you have been performing solo. And you also been performing with people like John Hodges, Andy Easton, and, you know, Paul Phillips, and Lissa Long. What has yeah, been yeah. the biggest um, factor in your growth as a music artist? You know, I've, I've always been a, a big music fan and, and all genres. I mean, I think the only thing that I'm, I'm not really, really, really big into is the, the new wave country stuff. Um, I just, I just can't, I just can't re relate as much to it. I mean, this is, no matter in what genre, there's always something good, and there's always somebody there that's doing something that's different and sounds good and is strong. So I don't have any um, hate in my heart towards anybody musically ever, but um, as long as they're out there getting it and, and going for it, I always have a lot of respect for them. And being a big music fan, like I said, it matters more to me to uh, st 
stay influenced by others so that I continue to stay driven and it gives me something to aim for. Because when you hear that song uh, that emotionally grabs you or you listen to that song that you're like, there's somebody who understands me. Um, I, I think it's it, it really solves – it's one of those things that solves the world's problems. It keeps people sane. And with everything going on these days, <laughs> oh, yeah. who knows, man? I think they need it more than ever. So um, yes. that's been my drive. And speaking of emotions, uh, by the way, we're talking to Davey Williamson. Go DaveyWilliamson.com. We're going to talk about your latest single that, that dropped not too long ago, Thin Disguise. And according to the write-ups on, you know, the interwebs, you're, you're, you're making a little buzz, man. And people are feeling this song because you have a purpose behind it. Let's find out the story behind Thin Disguise. Yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you, like I've, I've told most of um, everybody that asked me about it and, and, and it goes something like this, you know, I like to, I like to leave the songs up to interpretation for whoever the listener is, because the listener is going to take from it what they feel fits the bill for them. Okay. And so I've, I've seen some of these reviews where I've left it vague intentionally and seeing it come out that they took the song to a different place than what I actually was writing the song about. So a lot of times I like to leave it up to interpretation rather than just lay it out for everybody because I want them to be able to use it for, for their own healing purpose or their own saving grace, if you will, like some songs have done for me. So um, have I get into the actual um, details of it, which I think now are out there, um, a couple times somebody's asked me and I've just said, you know what, look, here's, here's how it goes. So in this particular situation, I kind of, I harnessed, um, the time when I was younger, when my, uh, my father and my mother had gotten a divorce and I was kind of in the middle of that situation of what led to the divorce. And, um, as the, that transpired and then the separation takes place and you live with one, then you go stay with the other and that kind of thing took place. It would be that one side of the story, um, it, it, I'm sure you know about this, but bickering between, and you probably heard about it, but the bickering between the two, one wants to make the other one seem bad so that you want to love the one parent more than you love the other one, right? Yeah. And if you go back and listen to some of the lyrics that I've I have in the song, one of them is, you know, I hate your lies, I hate your alibis. Um, it's a thin disguise kind of thing, you know. It's it's a it's a it's a route. The, the reason I went that way, it's because of the the blowing each other's candle out to make the other one brighter, and um, that's mainly what the song's about. And the separation, and and then what happened afterwards. And, and the um, turmoil that it created for me as a child back then. But I just kind of, I, I, you know, I thought back about when I was writing it, I sketched it out. And then it's funny what music will do to you when you go to writing the lyrics and what comes out when you, you really, <laughs> you really weren't aiming for that, but then it just all worked. And, and, and fortunately for me, and like you mentioned with the buzz that's going on, I think that a lot of people have dealt with that situation. Um, and so we seem to be getting some traction and um, and I'm thankful for it, and I'm glad I could help. Usually, good music it, it has the truth that comes out. Uh, it's the ones That's that right. kind of you know trying to be like everybody else that kind of blends in. But I, I have little jokes. But when people are listening <laughs> to this interview and they're not just hearing your life story about how certain events have influenced not just your lyrics but just your style of music, the style of play, the, you know, the arrangement and all that stuff for the creators out there you know so many people right now are in the same similar boat we're all going through this you know what and uh sometimes i get tired of saying on every single interview so i'm just going to ignore that word but we all going through this whole situation right now you know everything's tough for a lot of people uh things are different how do yeah. you keep yourself motivated creativity Oh, I just made up a word on the show. How do you <laughs> keep yourself mo <laughs> motivated to stay creative with all that's going on in the world? Well, let's. Let, this is one of the things I want to bring up anyway, and something that, that stood out to me in uh, my previous interview today was, um, 
you know, their interpretation of the song was, man, this is really fitting for a time like right now um, because of what's going on with the presidential situation, um, what's going on with people's um, feeling like they're being controlled. Mm-hmm. And with, again, the lyrical content and in the chorus, which is I Hate Your Eyes, um, you know, the lady was like, yeah, it's like whichever political side you're on, <laughs> yes. it's like that <laughs> opposing force, right? Uh-huh. And I'm not telling anybody what side to be on, but what I can say about it is that, again, it's open to interpretation, and I think that that's the beauty of music. And it just happens that the the lyrics are fitting no matter which way you do it. And I think that's one of... Um, I think that's one of the things that I've had a lot of success with doing with writing lyrics is that your uh, your everyday song it's either too direct or it really doesn't mean anything at all. And I think to find that that medium, the happy medium, and make it make sense and speak the truth, um, and but then make it. Uh, not vague, but make it so that it can be left up open to interpretation. I think people really grasp onto that because they can use it for their 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 own um, their own place upstairs in their head. You know that, that they can they can fit in and make it, everything seem like it's going to be all right, and it creates a place of um, of comfort knowing that somebody else is there, which is kind of where I aim as an artist um, in the first place. And once again, we're talking to Davey Williamson. Go to DaveyWilliamson.com. We're talking about his, his life story and also his latest single, Thin Disguises, everywhere, Spotify, you name it, he's on there. When you look back and you see the over time, how you progress as a artist, as a creative, what is some of the things that you're most proud of um, when you compare to where you started to where you are today? Well, it, it all came from an unrelentless pursuit of accomplishing something in the in the music business, and 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 not for just myself, but for others, and and uh, finding a way to be able to 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 finally become something of a success within the music business is such a hard thing to do, and you have to stay so determined to do that um, that. I, uh, it's hard for me to say that, that, I mean, today, just to be around today and to have the, uh, the, the consideration to be on talk shows and to be on interviews and to be on blogs and for people to have any kind of a buzz at all. I'm just thankful for that. And that's where I am today is the most successful that I've been because I've learned so much with it. I've had heights in the career, um, where I've played with, you know, some phenomenal artists you know, Torin Green from from the band Fuel. I've, I've played guitar with uh, Paul Phillips, or played music with uh, Paul Phillips and uh, his his people uh, with Puddle of Mud. And uh, it's a uh, it's been an interesting life that side of things. But what I would say I'm the most proud of, um, accomplishment wise, is that I've 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 continued to pursue it, and never gave up. And I think that if people do that. Um, in any profession, whether it be music or, or if you're going to school for the rest of your life, it, it's, the education is what you what you crave, and you continue to find that. At some point, I think that um, the uh, your heart's filled, and um, and you're good. You're good to go. I mean, you feel good, and you're in a good place. And I don't think that you're going to have, you know, anything else to have to prove to anybody. And you can continue to move forward. And again, like for my successes that I'm having. Um, today is today's a great day. Multiple interviews in a day. It seems to be all the, all of them are good. Nobody's calling me to bash me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to go with today's probably the best day, and it's because I've stayed determined and and uh, um, you know and it, uh, just I just kept going and going and going, and it continues to to uh, provide me nothing but happy thoughts and good uh, and, and good 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 moves forward. So. For that one artist who is wondering when they're going to get their first interview, uh, what advice will you give to the up and coming artist who is still waiting for that opportunity? Oh, wow. I mean, oh, if I could, if I knew <laughs> this is one of those things where if, 
if I knew now what I knew then back when I was pursuing it and going and going and going, just don't give up. I, 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 it's just in, even in the last year, and I've been doing this for 20, over, over 25 years, I think something like that. I just, I just never stopped and, and you continue to learn and you got to remember that you're in an industry that changes. So if you're not ready now musically, um, talent wise, but you're aiming that direction, don't focus on the music business side of it yet because it's, it's not time. It, it really is like taking the steps and moving from one step to the next, next step to the next. And you have to be cautious with your steps because people make a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, I've done it. I've done it my entire career. And um, the, the benefit that, that I, I can only attribute to myself is like what we just discussed, which is just an, I just never stopped. I continued to pursue it. Every time I was knocked down, I got back up and kept trying it again um, versus just being like, you know what? I'm through with music. And trust me, I've been there. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to get to where you're doing your first interviews, you want to get to where you've got your music being released. It's easier now more than ever to get your music released, but it's probably harder more now than ever to actually have anybody care about it. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, and have interviews and that kind of thing. So if you do it the right way and you don't try to take the shortcuts that are being provided nowadays by putting your music out, um, if you do it the hard way and you, you know, just work, 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 um, it all comes, it comes to you because eventually all your friends are going to stop playing music. Everybody that wanted a career and it's no longer going to want a career, they'll be married, they'll have kids, they'll be working at UPS. <laughs> you <laughs> know, become a record label. And then whenever you, <laughs> you know, when you begin to start moving forward again, yeah. um, they're always like, well, yeah, I want to get back involved in that. It's like, yeah, man, but you've been out of the game for 10 years. Like, you, you don't got it anymore, you know? And that's the thing. And, and I see people that I've played music with say exactly those things. And, um, you know, I love them all to death, but you know, there's, for me, I'm not going to go backwards to pick you back up, to bring you back up where I'm at. Um, and moving forward, it's, you know, if you were with me and you want to do it from the beginning, let's rock and roll. So it, for me, it made it easier to kind of do it on my own as, as the artist, but my relationships with, um, the other artists and people that had the same drive and wanted to pursue the career and take it seriously. Those people are all still side by my side, right by my side. So I have interviewed a lot of music artists from my artist to, you know, a songwriter, singer, you know, whatever engineer, the common thread that I'm seeing and hearing, because obviously we're not seeing each other. Uh, when people are talking about their career, there's this thing called work. And if you are mm -hmm. allergic to work, you're allergic to success, period. That's exactly right. Because success is not success if it does, if there's no work. And I've asked people how they define success and their personal opinion. So I'm going to let you do the honors and tell the audience, how do you define success for you? Well, so I, I, for many years have owned businesses as well on top of doing the music and I had to find a way that I could, I could own businesses and run business. I had to own them because if I work for somebody else, I, when it's time to go on tour, I have to lose a job. So I had to figure out a way to build a company and be able to make music my first priority again extremely hard to do because then you have to find something that you can do remotely, but everybody else has to stay back and do the work for you. Um, so that's obviously tough on a financial aspect. It's tough on, um, the workers and you have to make sure that they, there's a lot of trust there. Um, for me, um, I think the, the way that I've said it before and I don't, I haven't been asked this in a long time, but I want to say, Success favors the hardworking, and as if if even when I leave now, um, my businesses that I have here in Wilmington and and elsewhere, um, they know that it's not a vacation just because it's music. They know that they see how hard I work on the music as well, and they would rather stay home and work than come with me because. It, 
truth be told, I mean, it sounds nice and good. Everybody wants to be a rock star until you actually figure out what it takes to be a rock star um, and the amount of work and the amount of effort it takes to get there. Um, not that I'm a rock star by any means, but but um, the harder you work towards whatever it honing in on your craft, whatever it may be, um, especially with, with music is my experience. If you you just dive in completely head first and you figure out everything afterwards, it, it seems it seems to work out and it seems to at least be going that direction for me today. So success favors the hard working. So work hard. That's 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 it from Dave V. Williamson himself. That is what it is. I mean, that point right there is shut down the whole show. I don't have any more questions. <laughs> you just close the curtains. You pull the plug. The sound engineer told me to shut up, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna let you just end it on that note because that was well said, and it could have been said any better. With the opportunities that you have today, with the platform that you have today. You kind of touched on that already when you gave advice to music artists, but just for individuals, people who don't know the purpose, people who don't know what they want to be. What will you say to that listener right now? Keep your head up and keep grinding. That's it. Man. You know what you want. Go after it. Drop mic, man. All right. Yeah, that that was good, man. I mean, wow. You've been listening to Army Focus Radio. And we had an honor talking to Davey Williamson. He's going to be a rapper, too, one day. I don't know, because he has some bars. But, How uh, did you know that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. It's, you feel it? It's, it's like one of those things. Some people only say certain things that it's like, okay, real, recognize real. So you are a rapper. Yep, right. Is that breaking news, man? I don't know if your fans knew that. Yeah, well. They should know. All right, man. All right. I ain't refocus <laughs> radio guy exclusive. You don't know. Now you know. Man. That's a that's what they call uh exclusive. So man, right. first and for, first and foremost, uh thanks to Davy Williamson being on the show. And you can go on your focus radio.com to find out how you can listen to the show on demand. You can share with all your friends. So if you're in the music industry, and you are trying to find some inspiration right now because of what we're going through right now as, you know, people yeah. on this earth, because it's not just something that's happening in the United States. It's happening all over the globe. Keep your head up, like Davey said. But, man, go to DaveyWilliamson.com. Check out his latest single, Then Disguise, and make sure you share this podcast. Share with your friends because there's always somebody who's trying to find some education. That's what we try to do. Let me, throw one, let me throw one more thing at you. I'm going to go ahead and share the next single before it's released so that we can see if we can drive a little more traffic uh, to your site. So I'm going to send you over the next single. It's not even going to be released um, until probably uh, February 1st. I'm going to go ahead and send that to you guys now so that you can, you can share that. Make sure you share it so that everybody hears it. Um, and it's called Cliché. But make sure you do go and check me out on iTunes or uh, your, you know, on your Android phones. You can find me on the Google Music, if you, or the, what is it, YouTube Music. Mm-hmm. And uh, once you have that, there's actually going to be a link to where you can buy the uh, pre-release, the EP that's going to be released. We have a five-song EP that's going to be coming out, and you can go ahead and get your pre-order now. Um, and I really could use all the help I can get from everybody. We're trying to hit uh, a thousand pre-order sales um, for the EP. If we hit a thousand, then we were going to go ahead and be charted uh, on the Billboard charts and under under the Heat Seeker charts for uh, rock artists. So I'd really appreciate everybody if you like what you're here to uh, go ahead and, and get a pre-order from me. That'd be awesome, and I really appreciate it. Well, I'm Refocus Radio listeners. You know what to do. You hear this show, this podcast, please share with everybody and anybody who's in this kind of style of music that David Williamson is doing, share it, man, because someone like him who keeps it real, they deserve to get as much success as possible because it's not about them. Someone wise told me your dream is not big enough. It is all about you. So on that note, I'm going to just keep it real simple. Like we say on every show on Ivy Focus Radio, keep God first, stay focused, and peace.